Welcome to my channel. I am Megan and this is Creating Essence. Today I'm going to show you um, my plan for my fourth graders homeschool year this year. Now he has uh, high functioning autism and sensory processing disorder so we do things pretty customized for him so even though this is kind of in a lot of senses a standard curriculum we're going to do things really differently and I'll be mentioning throughout uh, some ways we commonly tailor things but it really is a day-to-day -day thing and how he's functioning that day uh, as far as how we modify it. If that sounds like something you're interested in watching, stick around. First up we have math. We use a Becca for a core curriculum for him. Uh, we do use it a little bit differently. I do not get the curriculum guides or the, te or the uh, teacher plans or anything. I only get the answer key, which shows me the answers to each problem on each page of the work text. We don't do any testing because if he can show me in everyday use that he knows a concept, I don't need to make him prove it on a test sheet. So how we would typically use this is to go over the information being presented here, do the class practice, and whatever it is that I need to do using manipulatives or really however I need to modify it to help him understand this concept, we will do that. We do the class practice together. And then on the back, I would just do in the review section, I would choose one of each concept for him to do. For him, not being super redundant is important because he loses focus really easily or he can get frustrated. So I work with him and I just make him do enough to get the concept, not tons of practice because his brain does work very quickly and he picks things up very quickly so he doesn't need a ton of practice. If he gets it, he gets it and I know that. Next, we have language. We are also using a Becca for this for him this year. We are doing God's Gift of Language A, which is their fourth grade curriculum. I do not have the answer key for this because it is still basic enough that I can very quickly uh, just look at it and know the answers for him, so I don't need that little helping hand there. However, I do a lot of it with him, but we do pretty much everything. This will be the content for the lesson, which I will go over with him, and however it is that I need to help him figure that out, we do it. And then we do the practice, this page and this page, since at the bottom it says Lesson 82, Lesson 82. This is one lesson, and we will do this. If he starts to get frustrated, we stop. I help him verbalize what it is that's frustrating him, and we work through it together. We also have this fantastic book from Usborne Books and More, the Usborne Illustrated Grammar and Punctuation book. This is a really fun reference book that goes over punctuation and grammar concepts and does a really fun, colorful, kid-friendly uh, explanation and uh, it shows you how to use all these things. In the back, there is also an index. So if there's a specific concept you're struggling with, we can look it up here and go right to the page or pages where those things are addressed. That often helps for him to um, look at it a different way to get things sorted out because you just never know what's going to work for him that day. We are also doing a Becca spelling. Now this will be his first day, to, first year, pardon me, doing formal vocabulary. Up until this point it's just been spelling. But this year he will have a short um, vocabulary list that is added to his spelling. He will be responsible for spelling the words as well as knowing what those words mean. And what we typically do for him is the first day of a spelling list, he will spell them aloud to me. 
so that I can help him with any pronunciation issues and help him really sound them out to make sure he understands them. The second and third day of practice, he will write them out. Sometimes writing is tough for him and the sensory input of holding that pencil is difficult. So we will do them orally multiple days if that's what he needs. Or we'll use different writing mediums like a dry erase board with a big fat marker or something like that. Lots of different ways, writing with a finger in a little shoebox size uh, stir-like container of sand. Just different things that are different kinds of sensory input that he might be able to handle that day to practice the words. And then on testing day, I just ask him to spell the word and he spells it for me. Now for reading, we have we, these are not a Becker readers. These are abridged versions of classic novels that my oldest has done as well. But these are ones that tend to be more action adventure, are not super girly because he is a boy's boy and he loves all things go, go, go. And that's just how he is. In his brain, he thinks boys do boy things and girls do girl things, and there is only one right and one wrong. So, well, one right and everything else is wrong. But we have Call of the Wild, Oliver Twist, Tom Sawyer, Treasure Island, and Pinocchio. These are all, like I said, abridged versions of these books. I got them in the dollar spot at Target several years ago. He will read these, and this year we will just begin working on book reports with him. We did them quite a bit sooner with my oldest daughter, but with him, it just felt right to wait. So this year we will start reading the book and then critically thinking and writing down some thoughts about those things. Next up, we have his free writing. We have this book, A Boy's Guide to Making Really Good Choices by Jim George. I give him a short assignment, two to three pages each day, and as you can see, it asks a couple questions about what you just read and asks you to think critically about this small paragraph and write a sentence about it. Same here. So that's what this is for. He will read that and write his answers in here. Some days, as you can see here, this is my handwriting, not his. So he had a tough time that day. So he told me what he would like me to write down. And we did that. This is just to get him started in the kind of thinking critically about what he just read process. When he's done with this book, we'll try some different exercises and really just go more guided by him and what he's interested in. But the point of the free writing is to get him to just write about his thoughts a little bit. Whatever they are, write them down. And this kind of guides him and tells him, think about this, write a sentence about it. Now for health this year. We are not doing a Becca for any of the kids for health this year. He will be doing health with my sixth grader. We will be using uh, a few books from Osborne. This one was recommended by Candace of Homeschool on the Hill. She, it was in their book shark last year for science and her son really enjoyed it. It is the Osborne Understanding Your Brain book, Lifting the Lid on What's Inside Your Head. And it is a really fascinating little book that just talks about intelligence and very briefly describes things like uh, nature versus nurture, how your brain works in eyesight, memory, long-term and short-term. And it really goes through those things to kind of help kids get a new kind of understanding on how the brain works. The Osborne Human Body Reference Book is a really neat book of diagrams and pictures of the different systems within the book. Uh, it goes in more into detail, but this is kind of the overview of it. What are bodies made of? The muscular system, the bone system, the vital organs, circulatory system. Goodness gracious, with the loud trucks. 
sorry about that. Nervous system, lymphatic system, and it talks about the different glands, and it has all sorts of really neat, colorful things to help them learn those parts. And then lastly for health, the Usborne Complete Book of Human, the Human Body. And this is really neat. This is really colorful. It has um, illustrations as well as actual pictures and gives them a, an idea of how things actually work inside the body. And it makes, them in, it makes it interesting for them. The table of contents is the building blocks of the body, talking about cells, genes, DNA, muscles and bones, skin, hair, and nails, the brain and the senses, which is where the uh, where this book would come in for more information, breathing and circulation, eating and drinking, health and medicine, body changes, facts and figures. So my oldest two will be doing this together this year. And I am pretty excited because these are fantastic books that other homeschool moms have really spoken highly of. So I'm hoping we also have an awesome experience with them. And he really is, he loves the details of things and he loves to know all the things and how things work. So I'm really hoping that these meet his need in that way and he really enjoys understanding the body better that way. For science this year, we are finishing up Apologia's Zoology 1, Flying Creatures of the Fifth Day. Um, we started this last year and we'll be finishing it out this year. It is pretty reading intensive, but we do lap books along with it. And as you can see here, it's not just birds. It is also insects, really anything that flies. So to cater toward his fascination with that sort of thing. I also got this. This was a Costco find, the National Geographic Kids Ultimate Bugapedia. And this is something that really, really interests him. So I got this to supplement where he may think the other bits on the flying creatures are boring. We can dig in a little more on flying bugs to grab his attention there. For history, we will be doing, again, this is together with my sixth grader, we'll be doing American history, starting with the history of the Native Americans. Um, this is with internet links. We also have lap books that we're going to do, starting working on the um, the larger tribes and their regions in the United States and some of their cultures and just dig in in that way and then we will move on to the European uh, sort of entry into American history and how that changed things. This is a fantastic book, uh, the Smithsonian Children's Encyclopedia of American History that was also really highly recommended by a lot of homeschool moms that do a lot of different methods for teaching. I looked through it and I'm really pleased with it. So we're going to be doing lap books and unit studies uh, with these kind of as some guides and more supplementation as it's appropriate along the way. And lastly, for art. Now my guy is a fantastic drawer. He is very obviously talented in that way, so we are digging in to that. I bought these for him last year, but they were a little above him as far as structured focus on what you're doing learning. So we're going to try to do them a little lighter this year, but this is Art for Kids Drawing. And it really starts very basically, and it talks about seeing things with an artist's eye, talks about the tools that you'll need, which we have all of those, and how to view things. It starts you out with exercises like drawing things with your eyes closed and drawing these pieces, then seeing if you can fit the grid together to figure out what that picture actually is. It's not what you'd expect. 
and then drawing simple shapes, turning them in three dimensional and really works things through step by step that way. And then if we can get through that, he loves animals. I think I already mentioned that. I have this. I thought it would be a fun um, encouragement, kind of something to get into. It starts with the basic shapes that the Art for Kids drawing book would teach him to start from and how to get through all the way to the end on those animals. So that's kind of the next step. This is something, these two, by the way, I both got on um, Amazon. This is a dollar store find. It's just a sketch tablet, 40 sheets, decent quality drawing paper from the dollar store. This is an Aldi find for the days when he seems to want to do something creative, but perhaps drawing is not something he's doing that day. This is a super fun um, book on making paper airplanes, all different folds, the different kinds, so many different, all these are different kinds of um, paper airplanes and they're from very basic to intricate and it also includes a bunch of good quality paper for folding. And that is it. That is my son's curriculum for the fourth grade. I would love to hear any comments you have or questions. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to see as far as how we alter things or examples of how we would change things uh, regarding his needs, I would be happy to show you. Just ask in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, hit the little red subscribe button below.